This is lecture number three. We're going to continue coastal landforms. There are six other kinds of coasts besides rocky headland coast and uh, beach coast. And so we're going to go over the six. And we're going to start with this first one that you've probably never heard of before. It's called a Rhea coast. Now, Rhea means Rio. Uh, and so in, in Spanish, Rio means river. So definitely rivers have something to do with it. And specifically, it's the drowning of river valleys or river floodplains by sea level rise over the last 10,000 years, since the en end of the Ice Age. So many uh, former uh, river valleys or floodplains became inundated as sea levels rose. And uh, basically, all bays on Earth, if you think of it, any bay that you can think of, uh, is a Rhea coast. Uh, so here's a, a beautiful example of Chesapeake Bay. Now this is the former floodplain of the Susquehanna River. And here's all its tributaries coming on in. And so the floodplain was all inundated and it's, the tributary floodplains were all inundated. And the only thing that remains is the higher bluffs. So if you think of San Francisco Bay, Tampa Bay, Mobile Bay, uh, anything, any bay you can think of is definitely you know, the drowning of a river floodplain or a rhea coast. And so you wind up with kind of an irregular and highly indented coastline. Yeah, and here's an, an, another example uh, of a rhea coast. Uh, and again, you know, it, it, here's one in England, right? And so it's a former river valley, and these are the former bluffs and tributaries. So really any bay that you can think of is a is a Rio coast. Oh my God! Here's the, you know, uh, the famous Opera House in Sydney, and here's the Sydney Harbour Bay. Okay, and uh, definitely a former floodplain with all its tributaries. Definitely a Rio coast. All right, now Rio coast can actually take on on a different kind of uh, appearance. Now, if the former coast, you know, was uh, was mountainous. What can wind up happening is the former floodplains, you know, were inundated, right, by sea level rise, but only the former mountaintops remain. And so what you wind up with is a whole series of offshore islands. So that's another way that Rhea Coast can appear. And here we are uh, in Marlboro Bay, New Zealand, definitely, again, a Rhea Coast. And so you wind up with a whole series of offshore islands. And definitely sea level rise in the Mediterranean, you know, created, uh, you know, the, all of the uh, Greek islands. And they were former mountaintops. Uh, and one final example is, is the coast of Maine. Uh, here's a topographic map. It's a little hazy here. But you can see uh, the coast of Maine is a uh, Rhea coast. There were former uh, mountain ridges, right, with, with river valleys and their floodplains, you know, kind of, uh, you know, jutting out into the ocean. And so what you wind up now with, you know, the former floodplains inundated, so you wind up with a whole bunch of bays, and then you wind up with island mountains, right? So we've got a whole bunch of islands that represent former mountains. And so then from our uh, diagram, this is really pretty much, you know, really what the coast of Maine looks like, and former mountain ridges and the, uh, the flooded valleys, and then some individual mountain peaks forming numerous offshore islands. Yeah, another, uh, the second type of uh, coast that I want to talk to you about is the famous fjord coast. Uh, and uh, fjords are very deeply indented coastlines. Now, these were formed during the Ice Age when uh, glaciers uh, carved former ri river valleys well below sea level. And uh, now since, you know, the Ice Age is over, uh, these glaciers have since melted. And so since the river, the uh, glacial valleys are carved below sea level, that allows the sea far, far, far inland, right? Since, this, since they carve well below sea level. And of course, Norway, right? The coast of Norway is the most famous, right? Uh, coastline, fjorded coastline. But you know, there are other really great examples of fjord coasts all along western Canada, of course, Alaska, southern Chile, and the South Island of New Zealand are some really other, you know, famous places. Uh, the third type of coast is uh, a barrier island coast. And these are beaches uh, and higher dunes. You know, so you've got beaches on the front and then higher dunes that become vegetated and stabilized. But these are parallel to the coastline. 
And so they're very common all along the Atlantic and Gulf Coast, you know, where we have the beaches. Invariably, if you go to a beach and all those beach processes that I talked to you about in regards to literal drift, it's really all going on along barrier islands. You know, if you go swimming, invariably you're on a barrier island. Uh, but you're definitely not going to find a barrier island coast along tectonically active coasts. You need a stable continental shelf in order for these barrier islands to maintain themselves. So you will not find a barrier island along the tectonically active coast of the western U.S. And here we've got, I think, like the coast of New Jersey or something like that. And so, in the, you know, so, yeah. Seaside Heights is the village. So, of course, you know, to get to the beach or, you know, to the, you know, the, the coastal town, you've got to take a bridge and then you'll go to the beach here. And so, let me just give you some uh, basic terminology. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's a shallow water lagoon, all right, uh, that is separating the barrier island from the mainland. So, that's where you have to take the bridge to get to the beach or the beach town. And so, here, this bay is, is actually, you know, a, a lagoon. Yeah, I want to talk to you about, you know, the major process that's been going on uh, with barrier island systems. And the major process is storm overwash. You know, uh, what winds up happening during, you know, high water events of hurricanes and really strong winter storms is that the highways can actually cross the barrier island. And what winds up happening is these high waves attack the frontal beach and it's going to erode the beach and these high waves can you know uh, inundate the barrier island and take this eroded frontal beach and eventually deposit it into the into the lagoon and so you can see some marsh you know forming from the deposition uh, of of the uh, you know eroded beach and so you know over time what's going to wind up happening these systems these barrier islands basically roll over themselves by erosion and deposition erosion and deposition erosion and deposition that's what they're trying to illustrate here here's actually a picture off the coast of Maryland of you know of you know, where a barrier island was, you know, in 1849 and, you know, whatever. And by 1980, it has definitely moved landward. And so, as I was mentioning, uh, the barrier island winds up over time. And this has been happening, you know, numerous studies, you know, all barrier islands slowly migrate landward over time. All of them do, right? And so, uh, that by that process of eroding the beach into the lagoon. Or just another uh, feature of, of barrier islands are uh, tidal inlets right here. And they're gaps in the barrier islands. So when you've got storm overwash, you know, sometimes, you know, instead of just, you know, having the deposition in the lagoon, that uh, that storm wave can be so strong you actually cut a gap that maintains itself through time and you wind up making breaks and breaking up the barrier island through time and so the tides can make its way in and out through the tidal inlets and so here we you know here off the New Jersey coastline you know, so here we've got the frontal beach and you know you can actually see some evidence of storm overwash here on the higher dunes where you know people have their homes and then we've got a tidal inlet here and they've got a jetty uh, to, to, to actually you know keep this uh, lagoon open, you know, for you know, for boating activities and what have you. And so since you've got this jetty, it's stopping the literal drift. So very often you have uh, barrier island offset because you're stopping the flow of literal drift. And so you've got offset. So this barrier island, you know, is, is moving you know, landward. And here's another example uh, of Padre on Padre Island. Now, this is, you know, an almost... Uh, an almost tidal gap here. You can see definite evidence of uh, storm overwash that eroded the higher dunes, uh, but it didn't cut through. Right? But you can actually see evidence very often on barrier islands of storm overwash. The fourth type of uh, coast uh, is a delta coast. And uh, of course, that's you know what we have here in Louisiana, and that's where Homa and Thibodeau is. And, uh, yeah, so anyways, what it really represents is deposition of river alluvium, you know, at the mouth of a river. And the process is, you know, the river flow, uh, the velocity is reduced, you know, uh, once it enters a quiet body of water. And that reduction in velocity is going to cause the river to deposit its sediment, right, into the relatively quiet body of water. And a major feature found uh, in deltas are called distributaries. 
All right, so it's the opposite of tributaries. Remember, tributaries are small streams flowing into rivers. Distributaries are smaller streams flowing away from the major river channel. And so, you know, since, you know, South Louisiana, you know, is a delta, I mean, Bayou Lafourche, you know, is a beautiful example of a distributary. Another, you know, bigger example uh, is the Atchafalaya River. I mean, that's a, that's a, a major distributary. And so we certainly have uh, many fine examples of distributaries on our deltaic plain. I want to just go over uh, two, you know, uh, very characteristic delta shapes. And I want to, uh, here's a, a satellite image of the uh, Nile River Delta here. And there's the Sahara Desert and the Nile River floodplain here. And the first delta shape is called an arcuate delta. And arcuate means broadly curving broadly curving. And so here we are in the Mediterranean Sea, and we've got a broadly curving uh, coast. Now, uh, today, uh, the Nile River has uh, two main distributaries, two main distributaries, right? and you know, it's been regulated. And what winds up happening uh, is the sand is coming out of these distributaries, right, and, you know, being deposited. But high wave attack in the Mediterranean in this section of the Mediterranean, is constantly pushing that sand back to the shoreline, filling in between the distributaries. And that high wave attack is actually you know, pushing the sand back and creating this smooth but highly uh, curving shoreline. And you're going to, of course, wind up, up with little points, you know, where the, the sand is coming on out. And so that's the, the shape of the Nile River Delta. And of course, we're going to do the Mississippi River Delta. It's called the Birdfoot Delta. You've probably heard of that. You can barely see it, right? And um, this is a, a type of a delta uh, that occurs where you've got low wave activity, allowing uh, the river and its distributaries to grow out into the sea or in this case, into the Gulf of Mexico. So you can imagine, I mean, this is a very fragile feature with the distributaries and depositing the alluvium. This very fragile bird foot delta, I mean, would never exist if we had high, persistent high wave activity, constantly pushing that alluvium back. And so we've got low wave activity, and it's called the bird foot delta because really all you see is the, you know, the outlines of the distributaries kind of looking like a bird foot. All right, the fifth uh, type of coast um, are coral reef coasts. And a, a coral is an organism uh, that secretes uh, calcium carbonate that it gets from the ocean and creates all these beautiful, colorful shapes. But the thing about coral... Uh, coral and coral reefs that build up over time are only found in the tropical oceans. Coral can only grow, you know, in warm tropical waters. So here's the distribution. It's something like the closest we're going to get, you know, is off the coast of, you know, really of Florida and a little bit into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Uh, but uh, definitely tropical distribution. Now, there are three types of uh, coral reefs. And I just want to kind of talk to you about them. The first type is called a, a fringing reef. And this is actually where the coral um, is actually growing up, all right, you know, in building and building, but it's attached to the shoreline. So it's fringing, all right. In this case, it's fringing, you know, volcano, and that's what they're illustrating here. Uh, and so here's some beautiful fringing reefs here, you know, the Hawaii, right? Of course, you're going to have to wear, you know, a beach shoes uh, because, you know, you get your feet all cut up if you try to go on out swimming. Uh, but here we've got it attached to the shoreline. So there's one in Hawaii. And then Tahiti, you know, so here's a form of volcanic volcano, you know, and you climb to the top of it and you get a spectacular view of the coral. And of course, you know, coral, you know, cannot exist, you know, uh, above sea level. So it's always below sea level. And, uh, and, uh, you know, and so it always gonna, is going to kind of tinge the water kind of like, you know, a, a beautiful, you know, uh, a coral blue color. <laughs> okay, the second type of reef is a barrier reef. And uh, in, in many cases, what winds up happening is the, the volcano becomes extinct and starts to uh, subside, you know, as the, you know, the lava, you know, dissipates. And so the volcano subsides. So that's going to allow kind of an opening to grow between what was once the barrier reef. And so now you wind up creating a, a, 
a, a coral reef that has built up, but now it's separated from the mainland by a lagoon. And, uh, well, of course, the most famous one is the Great Barrier Reef. And this one is not really associated with, uh, with a volcano. Uh, the, great, the famous Great Barrier Reef is located in, uh, you know, the tropical waters uh, of, kind of northeastern Australia. And, uh, yeah, and so it's, you know, uh, I don't know how many miles along here. But it's, it's very, uh, um, so in this case, what will wind up happening is, you know, since the end of the Ice Age, sea levels have risen and inundated and created once was what was once a, a, a fringing reef, you know, into a barrier reef. And so uh, the barrier reef, uh, yeah, the big town you go to is Cairns. But we went there. I didn't really see the town that we went to. But we were kind of in the southern end, and you you have to take a, a speed boat on out, and then you sit and go on a pontoon, and then you can do snorkeling. But the barrier reef is kind of like 50 miles out, you know, in the southern end, and the reef kind of gets closer, you know, um, near Cairns. Oh, and here's the Great Barrier Reef from space, and of course you see the kind of the coral colors here. But it is farther, as I said, you know, you know, south, and then it's kind of closer to the shoreline, and almost, you know, almost becomes a fringing reef, uh, you know, as you move north. Okay, and the third type is called the coral atoll, and these are circular coral reefs, all right. Um, and and what you know, in this scenario here, uh. What you wind up is, you know, the reef had, the coral had built on up, but the volcano has been extinct for, you know, for a long period of time and has totally subsided into the ocean. You know, it eroded away, subsided. And so what was once a, a, a fringing reef, a barrier reef, is now turned into a circular coral reef here, okay? And then changing sea levels, you know, have, have allowed maybe a little bit of the coral uh, to be slightly above sea level, then become vegetated. Uh, but then you can see most of it is below water level. And so you wind up with circular coral reefs, right? And these are really common in the South Pacific, where there was once a lot of volcanic activity, uh, and then the, the volcanoes have subsided. The sixth type of coast is a faulted coast. Right? These are along, uh, these are found along tectonically active coasts, uh, like, like, the coast of California. Now, the major landform associated with faulted coasts are, are features called marine terraces. And these are, you know, coastal platforms that are uplifted. And in most cases, they're former abrasion platforms that have been uplifted and uplifted and uplift. And so you wind up with kind of step-like features along the coastline if you've had many uh, uplift events. And so, as I said, they're found along tectonically active coasts. And so here's uh, some pictures, okay? Yeah, so as I was saying, I mean, these two pictures are uh, near Santa Barbara, California. And you can actually see, you know, uplift and uplift and uplift. And so, you know, this is over geologic time spans. But you can actually, you know, see the steps, right, representing, you know, the, the former abrasion platforms that have been uplifted and uplifted and uplifted. And I've got one final example, uh, Santa Cruz, just uh, just south of San Francisco. And in this case, we just have one, you know, main marine terrace here. And this is flat surface right here. All right, so you can have just one main, you know, marine terrace. And this is where Coastal Highway 1 is, or, you know, a whole series of them. End lecture.